Here's your first warned weather forecast first. Sponsored by Anderson Collision Center. Visit driveanderson.com. Temperatures are a little bit cooler this afternoon than where they were yesterday following a backdoor cold front that came in early this morning. That has led to our temperatures around 5 to 10 degrees cooler than where they were just 24 hours ago. Although those temperatures are still above average for this time of year and were as we got into the afternoon. Many spots still in the upper 30s even at this hour despite that easterly wind. 38 degrees right now in Rockford, 37 in DeKalb, 40 degrees still in Sterling. We are continuing to hold on to those clearing skies following that backdoor cold front, helping to bring a lot of that low level cloud cover out of the area. We may see some of that redevelop as patchy fog develops into the overnight hours tonight. Temperatures falling back down near that 30 degree mark. I'll let you know how long the fog is going to last and how much we warm for tomorrow afternoon coming up in your most trusted forecast a little later. There's a national shortage of mental health workers. One nonprofit says the scarcity comes as more people seek treatment. Plus, the Department of Labor releases its January jobs report. An analyst explains what was surprising about it. And new signs are coming to Rockford buses to celebrate Black History Month. City officials hope the displays inspire the community to come together. Live from WTVO 17, this is Eyewitness News at 5. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. Before we get to those stories, a Rockford man is arrested after police say he beat and held his girlfriend at knife point. Yesterday, Rockford police officers met with a pregnant woman at Swedish American Hospital after she fled her home on Lund Avenue. Court documents say the woman got into an argument with Corzani Simon. Simon then punched her multiple times in the face and choked her until she was unconscious. Court filings report later that day, Simon held a kitchen knife to the woman's throat. When he fell asleep, the woman ran from the home. Simon's charged with attempted murder, armed violence, and other several other charges. He's being held in the Winnebago County Jail. A high-speed chase leads to a Rockford man's arrest for burglary. Around 1.30 this morning, Ogle County deputies saw a suspicious vehicle on South Lowell Park Road. The car took off. After a chase through Whiteside and Lee counties, the car crashed into a ditch on West Lowell Park Road and got stuck. Police say the driver is Aiden Trujillo. He went to a hospital for minor injuries. Trujillo is accused of DUI, fleeing to elude, and several other charges. He has been released and was issued a notice to appear in court. The passenger, Demarius Gamble, was arrested for an outstanding warrant for failing to appear for a residential burglary. He is in the Ogle County Jail. The shortage of behavioral health care workers across Illinois affects a Rockford organization. In some cases, open jobs will sit empty for months. We told you last week when lawmakers in Springfield held a hearing about the problem. The shortage comes at a time of great need. Blake Deet spoke with Rosecrans about the issue. And Blake, how are they faring? Eric Mimi, Rosecrans executives told me the nationwide issue has hit Illinois harder than other states. And professionals are leaving the Rockford area for more opportunities in cities like Chicago. Rosecrans VP of Human Resources Kristen Hambach says the increasing demand for mental health workers has strained an industry already struggling to provide care. Since the pandemic, psychologists report significant jumps in many mental health disorders among patients. Hambach says the shortage makes it tough to reach people who need the help. So we serve over um, 60,000 people a year and in some of our programming we've had to limit census, so, you know, how many people we can serve in those areas, or we've had uh, to experience a longer wait list for people that want services, because the demand for those who need behavioral health services is the greatest it's ever been. I'll have more on how Illinois lawmakers are working to support mental health workers coming up at six. Mimi? All right, thanks, Blake. A local hospital is using a new procedure to detect lung cancer earlier. According to the American Cancer Society, more than 74% of patients are diagnosed with lung cancer at late stages. That leads to a survival rate of 5%. But when caught early and treated, survival rates spike to 92%. OSF St. Anthony Medical Center performed its first ever electromagnetic navigation bronchoscopy. The procedure allows doctors to find small suspicious lung masses. Doctors say this method is revolutionary for patient safety. So it's a game changer um, in the sense that, you know, pa patients who used to have to get more invasive biopsies, now they don't have to uh, have to undergo more invasive procedures and risk complications like lung collapse or bleeding into their chest or things of that sort. And it's a safe way to do this procedure. 
um, and we get good diagnosis and good tissue that oncologists sometimes need to make cancer treatment decisions for patients. The procedure is performed in an operating room and typically takes 30 to 60 minutes. A pathologist in the room also observes biopsy samples in real time, making a quicker path to treatment. New data show the national labor market is stronger than expected. According to the Department of Labor's latest report, the U.S. added around 353,000 jobs in January. Unemployment held steady at 3.7 percent. Most jobs came from healthcare, retail, and business service sectors. Experts say the increase for jobs means it's less likely the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates soon. I came into this jobs report thinking it would be one, a relative weakness or moderation in the job market. That's not what we got. This was a much stronger than expected January employment report. I don't know that the Federal Reserve necessarily looks at this report as a bad thing. The report also shows Americans are making more money. Hourly wages rose about 4.5% over the past year. A bill on Capitol Hill aims to grow competition and choice in the credit card market. It's called the Credit Card Competition Act. Senator Dick Durbin is the sponsor of the bill and says if it becomes law, it will bring down credit card fees retailers and restaurants face. Business owners say those fees can heavily impact their bottom line. It varies depending on how the how they use their credit card. You know, if it's a tap or if it's a swipe or if it's manually entered, those each one is is charged differently. Under the proposal, the Federal Reserve Board would be required to prohibit credit card companies with more than one billion dollars in assets from limiting the number of networks that can be used to process electronic transactions. Local buses will soon display historical figures to celebrate Black History Month. Rockford Mass Transit District is observing the occasion with nine new signs on vehicles. Eight of the displays will feature both local and national figures like Louis Lemon and Martin Luther King Jr. Those pictures will be on the street side ad displays of RMTD's fixed route fleet. The district partnered with the local NAACP chapter for the project. I think that for one, I think the community um, they have already shown a lot of love, but I think that I, I hope that people feel a couple things. One, inspired um, because they see people that look like them, especially African Americans during Black History Month. It's a time to celebrate individuals who pioneered um, different things to help you get to where you are right now. In addition to the signs, the district will display a reserved seat memorial on every bus for Rosa Parks Day, February 4th. That's her birthday. President Biden joins grieving families as the three soldiers killed at a U.S. base in Jordan are brought home. Up next, the Pentagon begins military strikes to retaliate for those deaths. And coming up at 6, Winnebago County prepares for next month's election primary. The county clerk says they want to give everyone the chance to cast a vote. Even though we didn't come anywhere close to breaking another record high temperature today, we are still above average for this time of year with highs reaching the 40s across the board. Let you know how much warmer we will be for tomorrow and the rest of the weekend coming up in just a few minutes. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team with Eric Wilson, Mimi Murphy, Scott Leber, and meteorologist Jordan Wolfe. Three American soldiers killed in a Middle East drone attack return home. The president and first lady are there to greet them along with those military members' families. ABC's Ike Jachi reports on the long-standing and uncommon tradition. U.S. retaliatory airstrikes in Iraq and Syria tonight after Sunday's deadly drone attack on a U.S. base in Jordan that killed three Army reservists and wounded 41 others. All this as President Biden and the First Lady and top members of the military were at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware today for the dignified transfer of the bodies of those reservists who were killed in that drone strike. And the President and First Lady attending the event with Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff General C.Q. Brown. Before before the somber event began, the president and first lady sharing a private moment with the families of the fallen American service members before the dignified transfer. The soldiers all from Georgia, Sergeant William Rivers, Sergeant Brianna Moffitt, and Sergeant Kennedy Sanders. Sanders and Moffitt posthumously promoted to sergeant. The three service members' deaths are the first U.S. fatalities blamed on Iran-backed militia groups who for months have been ramping up their attacks on American forces in Iraq and Syria since mid-October. 
Earlier this week, the White House saying the Islamic resistance in Iraq, an umbrella group of Iran-backed militias, had planned, resourced, and facilitated the deadly drone attack on Tower 22 in Jordan. Defense Secretary Austin also placing blame on Iran. Forensic evidence determining Iran made the drone fired by the militia group. This, this particular attack uh, was egregious in that, it, you know, the attack uh, was on uh, the sleeping area of one of, of, of our base. Both the White House and the Pentagon have stressed that despite the retaliatory strikes against Iranian proxy groups, the U.S. does not want a wider war with Iran. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Well, here in the state line, we saw some flurries this morning. After the break, Jordan tells us about our dry weekend and the 40 degree highs over the next few days. Now, your first worn weather forecast from meteorologist Jordan Wolf. I know I can't be the only one who is excited to see a lot more sunshine yesterday, especially considering how much of a cloudy stretch that we had, even dating all the way back to the 22nd. We had 100 or 90 percent of cloud cover for almost two weeks straight before we finally did see some of that sunshine. And that also brought our temperatures up as we got into yesterday, actually setting the record high temperature by a margin of seven degrees, breaking the old record of only 48, 55 degrees. Now the new record high temperature for February 1st, and that was along with a very mild stretch as well with many of our high temperatures around 10 degrees above average and we're still around 10 degrees above average today although a little bit cooler than where we were yesterday following that backdoor cold front that came through that has now brought our winds to coming out of an easterly direction and that has also brought our temperatures down in a few locations as many spots currently are sitting in the 30s as opposed to the upper 40s and even 50s where some of us were at this time yesterday we are continuing to see at least a little bit of that cloud cover lingering in some portions, although the majority of the area having seen some of that clearing as of the last couple of hours. Some of that cloud cover filling right back in, though, at the Poplar Grove Airport. We did see a shadow over there just a little while ago, but now that cloud cover filling back in in a few locations with still some lingering low-level moisture. A little bit of clearing outgoing in Rochelle, our SkyTrack camera out there to the south. But as I mentioned, we still have some lingering low-level moisture, which will once again allow for some cloud cover and even some patchier fog to develop into the overnight hours tonight. Temperatures across the board in the 30s, 37 degrees right now in Rockford, 36 in Rochelle and in DeKalb. Still holding on to 40 degrees in Sterling, but many of our dew points are sitting in the low 30s, which once again indicating that low level moisture that will allow that patchier fog to develop into the night tonight. Temperatures only fall to where those dew points currently remain in the low 30s, 30 degrees for the overnight low winds still remaining out of the east around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Incoming cloud cover and some low level moisture allowing for that patchy fog to develop. It will not last long into the overnight hours as we do warm right back up into the day tomorrow, getting back up to 47 degrees, mostly sunny skies, another fairly warm afternoon considering where we will have started out the day. That cloud cover working back in with some patchy fog overnight tonight, but giving way to that sunshine with highs back in the mid 40s during the day tomorrow. As we get into the weekend and early next week, we have a little bit of a pattern flip coming, which will continue to bring that more mild air into the area. This is where we have a Rex block in the upper levels, a low pressure to the south of high pressure, that high pressure keeping everything locked in place, which will allow that mild air and also fairly dry air to remain with us through the weekend and early next week keeping us away from any rain chances and keeping the more mild air into the area. Eventually, though, that ridge breaks down and that allows our storm tracks to come right up the area. That's what's going to bring us our additional rain chances as we get into the mid and late parts of next week. In the meantime, though, very dry conditions with highs still above average around 15 to 20 degrees above normal. 47 degrees for Saturday and Sunday with additional sunshine. Our overnight lows very close to where our average high temperatures are this time of year. And we even see a 50 degree day that is more than 20 degrees above average for this time of year when we get into late next week. Can't wait for more of that sunshine. Thanks, Jordan. Scott's in next with sports. He catches up with the Rockford Ice Hogs lone all-star who will be heading to that event this weekend. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. Big Ten teams are ready to take the court tonight. Minus two. Guilford won't play and East won't play. Guilford has already clinched at least a tie for the Big Ten championship. The Vikings could be declared outright champions tonight if Auburn should lose at Belvedere. 
Auburn's the only team that has a chance to catch Guilford, but it's a slim chance. Also tonight, Belvedere North plays at Jefferson, Boylan at Hananiga, and Harlem at Freeport. Our game of the week tonight will be a Nick 10 girls game. Boylan will host Hananiga. These are the top two teams in the conference. Hananiga defeated Boylan in their first matchup in early December. If Hananiga wins again tonight, that would put the Indians three games up on Boylan with three conference games remaining, so Hananiga would clinch a tie for the conference championship. Reagan Holgate and I are going to have all that action for you tonight on overtime. We'll also chat with Byron girls coach Eric Yearley, and we'll spotlight Boylan's Lily Esparza. That's at 11 o'clock on Fox 39. The Ice Hogs will host the Grand Rapids Griffins tonight. The Hogs will head into their All-Star break after their game tomorrow night at the BMO against Manitoba. For most of the guys, it'll be a chance to get away from hockey and relax. But not for rookie defenseman Ethan Del Mastro. He is the one Ice Hog who's been named an All-Star. He'll head to San Jose for the All-Star festivities that'll play out on Sunday and Monday. Del Mastro has played in all 40 of the Hogs games this season. He's tied for third on the team in assists with 15. He also has four goals. He just turned 21 a couple of weeks ago. He is the youngest Ice Hogs All-Star since Adam Clendenning 11 years ago. I asked him if he ever imagined coming into this season that he would become an All-Star. I think I just came in kind of thinking about playing, not, not really thinking about the All-Star game, but uh, obviously a great accomplishment and uh, super excited. Does being named an All-Star speed your timeline for when you want to reach the NHL? Does it do anything in terms of your outlook on your next year or so? Uh, I wouldn't say so. I mean, obviously it's a great feather in the cap, but I, I think it's just about focusing on playing here and, and, and getting better, and, and if that time does come, then, then being ready for it. Well, Packers fans are the only ones, are not the only ones excited about what they saw from Jordan Love down the stretch of the season. GM Brian Gutekunst is too. He is sold on Love being the guy who can help the Packers get to a Super Bowl, not just with his talent, but also his intangibles. I think just the way he led our football team, you know, through the tough times, through the success, um, all the challenges that a season, you know, kind of brings you. He just, he did a really good job kind of leading those guys. And I think for a young player in his first year, that's trying to figure it all out to be able to do that was uh, exceptional. That's sports. We'll be right back. So I walked by a window this morning. I looked outside and I said, it's snowing. Yeah, <laughs> it those so flakes, they, they didn't seem like, like they lasted very long, but it sure was a surprise, especially after, after yesterday, yesterday we had 55 Record degrees. high temperatures yeah. yesterday, <laughs> snow flurries the following morning. Well, welcome to the Midwest. You get a little bit of each season each day, and sometimes in a matter of 12 hours. Yeah, a or reminder less. that Yeah, we had a lot of it. February. Yeah. But the the February of. weather, and luckily things are looking up as far as temperatures go, and plenty of more sunshine as well. We did get a lot of sunshine yesterday. Not as much to start out the day today, but some clearing now on the first one interactive radar from Rockford Auto Glass and More. Going to help us bring some more of that sunshine as we get into the day tomorrow. First, though, we do have some chances for patchy fog into the overnight hours tonight. Possibly some slick spots as well, especially if we get that frost that develops on roadways and elevated surfaces. The temperatures rebounding back into the mid mid 40s as we get into the middle part of the week, even 50 degrees next week. Great, thanks, Jordan, and thank you for spending some time with us. Stay safe.